Good day, everybody. It's Andrew here, and welcome back to another update. As always, thank you so much for supporting my work, and just a friendly reminder that I am here to be a voice for you, to be a voice for seniors and those who are disabled, to make sure that our government is taking care of those who need it the most, as well as keep the promises they made on the campaign trail. Now, with that said, I've been getting a lot of questions about the stimulus check for seniors that Bernie Sanders is trying to include in this stimulus package and if it might be approved by December. Now, given everything we know, we're going to discuss whether or not we think these stimulus checks could be approved in December and when they would actually be sent out if they do, in fact, get approved soon. So let's discuss the details in this video. But before we do, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. As always, I have a second channel, so please subscribe to that one as well. The link to that is going to be in the comments of this video. Now, let's talk about $1,400 stimulus checks and the potential of having them sent in December. First, let's back up and talk about where this idea for stimulus checks for seniors even began. First of all, We have a petition for $2,000 stimulus checks, which is about to hit 4 million signatures. And a lot of Democrats in Congress have been referring to this petition, saying that with inflation being so bad, a $2,000 stimulus check is something they should be considering, especially given the fact that almost 4 million Americans have signed this petition. Well, then we have Bernie Sanders and the Senior Citizens League which is an advocacy group for seniors, trying to include a stimulus check specifically for seniors. If you follow my channel, you've known about this for a couple of months. Well, there is a good chance it's going to end up in the stimulus package. But if it does, when will they be sent? And do we have a good chance of them happening in December? Well, let's quickly take a look at the calendar here. As of today, making this video, it's November 12th. So this is Friday. And let's talk about the details of what we know is happening now. And based off of all the research I've done, what is a realistic date when this could happen? Well, November 15th is the week that Nancy Pelosi wants to approve the stimulus package in the House. Now, there is two chambers, obviously, the House and the Senate. It's going to be a lot easier to get it approved in the House than it is going to be in the Senate. So, realistically, it has a 50-50 chance of getting approved in the House by next Friday. Now, the reason it's a 50-50 chance is because a handful of moderate Democrats in the House want the CBO, which is the Congressional Budget Office, to tell them exactly how much this package is going to to cost and whether or not it's going to be fully paid for. And we don't exactly have an, an exact timeline for when those numbers are going to be released. We have about a 50% chance of those numbers being released next week and a 50% chance of them being released the week of Thanksgiving. So optimistically, those numbers will be released next week. The numbers will look good, and then the House will approve the stimulus package by the end of next week, November 19th. Now, something else could happen. Those numbers could come out next week, and the numbers could be bad. Now, that's not likely... Experts expect the numbers to look good, and they expect the stimulus package to be fully paid for. They actually expect there to potentially be some money left over. But if those numbers look bad, that would delay the stimulus package. We just have to throw that out there. So 50-50 chance the House approves the stimulus package next week or the week of Thanksgiving, which would have to be by November 24th, the day before Thanksgiving. With that said, Congress is actually supposed to be on vacation that week. If you see the week of November 22nd, there is no color highlighting those dates. That means that Congress is completely out of session. They are on vacation for the entire week of Thanksgiving. Now, in my opinion, if they don't get the stimulus package done, they should not be allowed to go on vacation. And let me know in the comments if you agree. Because as the American people are going to enter the holiday season, if they're forced to suffer without a stimulus check because Congress is not doing its job, well then, quite frankly, they really don't deserve to be going on vacation. That's my opinion. Let me know in the comments if you agree. I have a strong feeling that most of you are going to agree with that. So if they don't get it done by Thanksgiving, then we're going to have to wait until the week of December 1st for Congress to come back from their little vacation, which they don't deserve. So let's take an optimistic look, and then so a best-case scenario, and then a worst-case scenario. So best-case scenario... The House will approve the stimulus check package next week. Then the Senate 
will obviously take their week off. And then they'll address the stimulus check package that first week of December when they come back on November 30th. The Senate will approve it by the end of the first week of December. That is, quite frankly, a little optimistic, but it's also realistic because that is the week that the debt ceiling crisis has to be addressed. Remember, Congress created a short-term solution for the debt ceiling crisis, but that is going to run out about December 3rd. They approved enough funding to last through about the first week of December, They're going to have to find a permanent solution for that. And Democrats have said they really want to get the stimulus package done before they have to address that for various reasons that I won't go into in this video. So best case scenario, they will, the Senate will approve the stimulus check package by the end of the first week of December. And then if it is approved that week, when will you actually get the stimulus checks? Because based off of previous stimulus checks, we do have a good idea as to when you would actually receive those. So It looks like, based off of previous stimulus checks, about 50% of people receive their stimulus checks in the first three weeks or so, and then the other 50% can take anywhere from three weeks to three months, which is, I mean, three months is completely unacceptable. I think we could all agree, but we have seen some people take up to three months, especially with the previous commissioner of Social Security. He didn't really work too well with President Biden, and he purposely delayed stimulus checks for seniors, but he's been fired, so that shouldn't be an issue. So based off of the fact that the majority of people receive their stimulus checks in the first three weeks, if it's approved in the Senate by December 3rd, that means that more than half of people should receive their stimulus checks by Christmas. So that's really good news, right? And then the other half, we would expect most people to receive them in chunks every week by the end of January for the most part. Of course, there's always a handful of people who get their stimulus checks really, really late. So basically the bottom line you hear, is it realistic for this to happen? Now, personally, I give it a 50-50 chance. I truly believe there's a 50-50 chance that this stimulus check package will be approved by December 3rd and that stimulus checks would go out by Christmas. Now, the reason I think there's a good chance for that, like I said before, is the debt ceiling crisis. Democrats really have to get this stimulus check done before the debt ceiling becomes an issue once again because I'll kind of explain the dynamic of that quickly. It's a little bit complicated, but Mitch McConnell is trying to force Democrats to include the debt ceiling increase bill in the stimulus package. And Democrats don't want to do that for various reasons. First of all, it's kind of considered political suicide because if they raise the debt ceiling on their own without Republicans, the next year when the 2022 elections come around, Republicans can say, oh, Democrats raised the debt. They're turning us into Venezuela. They can basically use that angle to make Democrats look bad. When usually what always happens is Democrats and Republicans raise the debt ceiling together so not so nobody can really take blame for that, right? They're both doing it together. So if Democrats get the stimulus package done before December 3rd, the stimulus package is going to be out the window because they're using budget reconciliation, which is something they can only use once to twice a year. And then Mitch McConnell will basically have no choice but to help Democrats raise the debt ceiling. Otherwise, he's going to force us into a recession, which that's not going to happen. We all know Mitch McConnell is not going to let the country fall into a recession because Democrats could blame him for not allowing them to raise the debt ceiling. So a little bit complicated, but bottom line here, because of the debt ceiling crisis, there is about a 50-50 chance we could have the stimulus check package approved by December 3rd, and then most people would receive their stimulus checks by Christmas. So what is the other 50% chance, right? What could happen on the, the other side of that? Well, basically, Congress is supposed to go on vacation on December 10th. Again, the, another vacation for about a month, and they won't come back till the first week of January. So if they don't get this done by then, there's a good chance that this stimulus package won't be fully approved until sometime in the beginning of January. So some experts think that secretly Democrats actually want this because what they want is to approve the stimulus package next year in 2022. That way, when the elections come up next year, Americans will remember, hey, Democrats just gave us stimulus checks a few months ago, so we should vote for Democrats in the elections. So obviously that's unacceptable. To make the American people wait a few more months is just really unacceptable. And honestly, it would probably make them look even worse. And I mean, at this point, you've probably heard that Democrats are doing really, really bad in the polls as it, as it is, right? I mean, it's been shown that the smaller the stimulus package gets, the worse Democrats are doing in the polls. And the longer it takes to approve the stimulus package, 
the worse Democrats do in the polls as well. Now, like I always say, of course, there are other issues at play. It's not just stimulus and it's not just Social Security benefits, but that is one of the largest issues at play here, right? So if Democrats get the stimulus package done more quickly, it might help them in the polls. Just like if they increase Social Security benefits, it's going to help them in the polls as well. And guys, let me know in the comments, what is the most pressing issue when it comes to Democrats? And what would what what do you think would help them increase in the polls? Do you think it's getting the stimulus package done? Do you think it's controlling inflation? Do you think it's increasing Social Security benefits? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below this video. I'd be really interested to see what you have to say. But in any case, if Democrats get the stimulus check package done in December, it's going to go a long way in helping them in the polls. But like I said, there's probably about a 50-50 chance that the stimulus check package gets done by the beginning of December, which would mean stimulus checks be getting sent right around Christmas time. So to answer the question of this video, I personally think based off of my research, we have about a 50-50 chance, right? And I also want to clarify that as of now, the stimulus check even being in this package is not 100% certain. There's a chance it might not be included and it could be included in the next stimulus package in 2022. Again, completely unacceptable, but I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I'm just a messenger. It's just, it's not set in stone yet. I'm not saying it's being taken out, but it could be taken out and put in the next stimulus package. So things are still up in the air, guys. But with that said, there's a really good video here from Fox News explaining why people think that Democrats are doing poorly in the polls. Some people think it's stimulus. Some think it's Social Security benefits. Some think it's inflation. And some think it's because Democrats are being a little too liberal. Like President Biden is listening to liberal Democrats like AOC and Elizabeth Warren. And a lot of people think that Democrats should be a little more moderate to really kind of do better in the polls, right? Because a lot of the country is actually a little more moderate, right? But again, this is what Fox News is saying. Obviously, Fox News and CNN are complete opposites. So what I do on this channel, I like to show both sides. I like to show some clips from Fox News and some from CNN. So full disclosure here, I'm not trying to promote Fox News. Like Just like I also try not to promote CNN, I try and show you both sides so you can come to your own conclusion. So with that said, let's watch this clip from Fox News. It does a really good job of kind of discussing why Democrats might be doing poorly in the polls and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So let's dig into the midterm elections. They will decide the balance of power in Congress as well as state and local races across America. We showed you that USA Today poll with President Biden's approval rating at 38 percent and the vice president's 28 percent. That same poll found nearly half of Democrats would vote their Republican candidate for Congress if the election were held today. MSNBC's Chuck Todd with this warning for Dems. So what happened to Democrats on Tuesday goes far beyond the defeat of Terry McAuliffe in Virginia or Governor Phil Murphy's narrow escape in New Jersey. If you look at it from coast to coast, it was a warning to Democrats that their congressional majorities are in grave danger. Okay, I really want to talk directly to voters though. Voters Voices, John L., a police officer from Connecticut and a Republican. We haven't seen each other since election night. Welcome back. Sue H., a prosecutor and former chair of the Connecticut Republican Party. Amanda A. is a minister and entrepreneur, a Democratic voter, also from election night. Great to see you. And a Democrat, Dr. Natasha D., an assistant professor of environmental medicine at the University of Louisville. Great to see everybody. Natasha, I'm going to come to you first. What is it that's missing for Democrats right now? And are the president's poll numbers so low that it's going to be almost impossible to bounce back before people make a decision coming up on who's going to run Congress? Well, thank you, Harris. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today, first of all. But um, certainly there are definite concerns uh, when it comes to the Democratic Party right now. Last week's uh, election results, uh, I, I see them a little more optimistically. They were close. Um, but in addition to that, we have these approval ratings that are low. But I will also say that approval ratings have been low since 2017. Uh, so there are some challenges here. And then when we look ahead to midterms in the coming year, they often have a, f a flip, a switch um, in terms of party. So for Democrats to be successful, uh, we cannot continue to do the same things and expect 
a, a change, mm. things to be different, and we need radical change. Um, and so for me, what's most important going forward is protecting our health. Our health is our greatest asset, and what can be more important than our health? So I want to see bold, strong action to support bold and strong public health so that we can round the corner on this pandemic gotcha. and our right. nation can be healthy and successful. All right, I, I want to just hear uh, also from the other perspective in all of this and you know one of the things that that people look at John is just how they feel in general about how the economy is going inflation is is raging right now what's your take you know the, the kindest way I can put it is is things right now are a bit of a disaster um, you mentioned inflation gas prices are through the roof and these are issues that affect real people you know, we all have to fill our cars with gas to go to work, and, and it costs more. And, and the frustrating part is that the administration doesn't seem to care, doesn't seem to care that real Americans are hurting, and they just keep doubling down on the same talking points, not acknowledging what's going on in this country. And I think that's a big reason that you saw the turn at this uh, last election, especially locally, with Republicans winning a lot of seats. You know, it's interesting. You can't get away from that word empathy, John. I want to just double down real quickly with you. Um, how much does that matter, especially when you're talking about a president who has north of 60 percent of people who don't approve? That's Democrats, independents, and Republicans together in this latest USA Today poll. You know, I, I'd hate to give the president any any tips, but if he would just take some level of responsibility for the failures of his, his administration, I think that it would go a long way. We're not perfect. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. But just accept that you could have done better in certain areas and you're going to try to improve. That's what a leader does. And I'll tell you right now, we do not have a leader in the, in the Oval Office. Let's get to this. Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called out Democratic strategist James Carville for blaming the loss that they had with Democrat Terry McAuliffe in Virginia on progressives' stupid wokeness. That's what Carville said. In a series of tweets, AOC, as she calls herself, the Congresswoman, woke is a term pundits are now using as a derogatory euphemism for civil rights and justice. And before people disingenuously complain, woke is denigrating to older people. It's actually pundits like Carville using terms like woke to insult voters under 45. That's denigrating. Don't wonder why youth turnout falls when Dems talk about them like this. Amanda, what's your take? I knew you were coming to me, Harris. Well, it's you're nice a Democrat. To see you again. <laughs> you too. Right, right. <laughs> my, my take is that we need to be able to talk about the role that racially coded attacks play in American politics. And using racially coded attacks has been an organizing tool for the GOP for decades. Whether we're talking about how Reagan used welfare queens or how the whole pro-life movement came out of the GOP's desire to keep schools regulated to keep schools racially segregated, we forget that. And now we are using racially coded attacks in the whole way we're talking about critical race theory and not wanting to talk about the real ways that racism and white supremacy and the patriarchy are very violent organizing tools in this country. So my take is that we need to have real conversations, white women specifically in the Democratic Party, about how race is at play here. We've never had a wow. real true conversation Amanda? about the role race plays in this country. And, and you know, I have respect for everybody. Um, when you punt on a question that has to do with the infighting within your own, your own family of party, I should say, not your personal family, but your political one, it does make me wonder if you understand uh, what I'm asking. And, and it's less about you trying to play, you know, take a ball and, 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 or take a bat and try to hit the ball away, um, but more on really do you understand what it's going to take to dig out of the hole that this Democrat Absolutely. president is under. It takes, us fa it takes the Democrats facing the race conversation head on and owning it. But Before why do we think do that, race we can't is such a big deal when people uniting. tell you that it's the economy? They tell you it's inflation. Sue, I want to come to you. Because we can't have a conversation about racial justice without talking right. about I'm go to the Sue. economy. Hold on All one second, of those Amanda. injustices are intertwined and connected. Thank